got you. Hey, y'all, it's Box Seats. Your boy Rodney Perry is in the driver's seat today. Uh, Fig, the business bully, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Mr. Analogy himself is in the building. Talent is here. And Mike Sean. What's up, y'all? This is Box Seats. It's going down. I'm, I'm excited. Are you guys excited? Yeah. Yeah. I am very happy to be here. Very happy to be here. Fuck you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It goes down today. <laughs> box seats. Uh, Friday, Friday feels special on the box seats to me. Fig, how are you today, bro? Hey, man. It's a lovely TGIF Friday. The sun is shining. And we're happy to be alive and on the box seats. We are happy to be alive and on the box seat. ND, the business bully himself, is sitting in seat number two today. How are you, bully? Man, let me tell you something. I feel good. Snapping necks and casting checks. Woo! Whoa, that right. boy's dialing. I love it. Talent, how are you, man? We missed you, bro. Anytime you, you're out there getting it, it, we'd love to see you working. But, man, I tell you what, man, when you're in the <laughs> house, it makes me feel good. Hey, man, I feel real good. I was watching a girl's live video and, and she had a nip slip. I'm good, baby. Oh, what, 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 oh, what are we doing? What are we doing? We can, we can run that video. If that don't make your day. It wasn't that makes nothing. my day. Right. It wasn't. She didn't mean to do it. She was showing a waist trainer thing and, yeah. and adjusting and, and boom. There you go. Said, there you go. What I heard was, here you go, Tampa. Here you go, <laughs> here, Speaking of here you go, Tampa. Here you go, Mike Sean in the business. Hot off a sold out show Wednesday night. He found a new talent. He's doing it all. Mike Sean, man, how are you today, bro? Uh, listen, man, I ain't missed the Bible. God is good. I done paid every bill. Still got money left over. Who wants more than that? Who wants more? Who, who wants more than that? Who, 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 what? <laughs> who wants more? <laughs> Yo, shouts out to the man Amir Sealy, always in the box seats with us. Amir. You, you haven't been on since, since I've been hosting. I mean, we got to get you into into the box, man, so we can really wild out. Amir Sealy, man, love, man, respect. Uh, Miss Miss, you know we we gotta get this young lady on. She be talking trash from the from the, yeah. the, the cheek seats. <laughs> talent that blue, I need that. I need that blue talent. Uh, I got you, son. Uh, Oh, Yo, happy Friday, gentlemen. Great to see you all. This melanin popping on this lovely day. Look at y'all. All right, baby girl. Appreciate right. y'all. Facebook user. If you if you don't have your photo up, please hit, hit us with your name so we can uh, make sure we shout, shout you out, give you some love. We really appreciate you guys tuning in. Mad love, mad respect. Let's get the show underway. Um, Let's see. I got my notes here. You know, uh, our illustrious producer, uh, Frank Holder, hit me up this morning, man. We, we was going back and forth over some of the topics. So let's get right into it. Case Keenum is in the lineup in lieu of Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield has, has what did he hurt? He hurt his leg. He hurt everything. He hurt everything. He got two injuries. He got a shoulder injury. He got something else going on with his arm, and they played last night. And uh, I don't know if I'm reading this word right, right Mike Sean. It said he hurt his labia. Men don't have labia, do they? Yeah, he got labia. Do it's you think it's, it's labium, not labia. It's oh, different. Oh, okay. It's different I, didn't know. Know. I was like, how did man hurt his labia? Yeah. <laughs> they said he took, they said he also pulled his clitoris. <laughs> no, no, he didn't. No, no. Oh, really, Lord? Really? I'm coming down the court. I'm like uh I'm like uh Rondo. If I come down the court, I'm gonna give it up. Somebody go grab it and dunk it. <laughs> yeah, I said a polite nip slip and got the, the rags thrown at me. But really? The clip? Hey, that's how we get down. That's how we I get down. I you, Talon. I'm a follower. If you open up the floodgates. <laughs> so, wait. So, so Baker, Baker Mayfield may be a virgin again. But no, Case Keenum balled out last night. He did his thug thizzle. He got the win for the Browns over the Broncos. But how about this? Beckham still only got like, like, Two catches, 23 yards. Is Odell Beckham done? Maybe I, on the Browns he is. Um, you know, but I don't think he's done. You know, he has he has age in his favor and his size that, you know, he's not a big receiver dude, so he can last a little longer. But maybe he's going to have to find a new home. That's what it's looking like. Wow. Uh, uh, any any thoughts on that bully, man? What, what, what are you thinking? Uh, listen, I am an Odell Beckham Jr. fan. I, I will say this. Did somebody do- fart? That wasn't me. You might want to look down. You might want to look down talent. I just, it wasn't down t- talent. Did you no, let one go? No, that no, was you. 
like a snort. Oh, got it, got okay. it, got it. I just heard it. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> so I, I think what Odell Beckham Jr. was happening here, Uncle Rodney, is that he's got a case of the Simmons. Um, so I think he's not doing as much as he possibly could. One, he's not getting the ball enough, and two, but I that's don't not think his fault. Is it no bully? No, it's not his fault. I think he's not happy. So I don't think he's doing enough, you know, to do that. He's doing just enough to. So he, <laughs> what's so saying? I'm just here so I don't get fined. I don't think that Odell Beckham Jr. wants to stay in Cleveland. Mm. I mean, we've all played Cleveland. And I mean, we might have had a good time, you know, for that 30, 45 hour we did on stage <laughs> and maybe that night, but we got the hell up out of Cleveland. Wow, yep. you may have a point. Uh, uh, Mike Sean, man, uh, Case Keenum had a great night last night. Um, did he make his case to maybe, you know, get a job somewhere else? And 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 please chime in on on your Beckham thoughts. Case Keenum was fine. It wasn't it wasn't a great night. He, I think he didn't even crack two hundred yards, but he was fine. He's he was adequate. Odell he was Beckham, serviceable. He was serviceable. Yes, yes, he was serviceable. Odell Beckham is going to take time. There has to be chemistry. When you're out that many games, when you have these injuries, ask anybody. And then on the flip side, if you look at Deshaun Jackson with the Rams, he's deadly, right? He's still deadly, but he doesn't get as many targets. He's specifically oh. to open up that defense, pause, and, and to take the top <laughs> off to take the top off the defense. Odell just has to be patient. And the problem with Odell is that his reputation precedes him. So when he doesn't yeah. get enough targets, we all automatically assume he's not happy or is disgruntled. Yeah. He's just playing his position. He just, so, he's so just are, staying are, in his Are we right tripping? Now. Are we tripping? Fig, are we tripping? I mean, is Odell fine with this thing? I mean, it, we, we was blaming it on Baker Mayfield, but not Case Keenum. Case Keenum ain't throwing in the ball either. Uh, what, what should we, we be looking for out of this guy? Man, I think uh, Odell Beckham Jr. needs to get out of Cleveland, man, and get to uh, a team that actually needs and appreciates his services. Uh, I do not know a professional athlete that does not have an ego and isn't ego-driven on some level and wants to be a major contributor to the team that he's on, especially at the caliber of talent that Odell Beckham Jr. has. Yo. Right, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, one, Mike. Just real quick. The the the, the way the, the Browns play, they're a running team first. Even yesterday with all their running backs, they're a running team first. Odell, you're on a team. Do not mess around and want to be a number one receiver on a team that's not going to make no noise in the playoffs. Don't be that dude. Mm. Troy Aikman with the Cowboys could have thrown for 50,000 more yards wow. as a quarterback. But he had Emmitt. Right. He gave Emmett the ball. Michael Irvin could have caught more passes. Michael Irvin was a beast. He could have caught, but they had Emmett. Just play your spot. You're making your money. This team could make noise in the playoffs. Don't wind up. Don't wind up somewhere where where you're just like you're a star, but they don't do nothing. Like, wow. You got a chance to do something with this team. Hey, well, well said, Mike Sean. And you know, you, you bring up all kind of thoughts when you say it that way, because I mean, you really, really didn't think about it. But that's a great, great point, man. I mean, sometimes you guys got to settle into what the what the I, I, the the mission of the team, right? You yeah. know, so well, well said. Um, and and does Odell maybe need to go somewhere where the mission is is more uh, a past cent- central? Yeah, get the hell out. I'd like to see him in Baltimore. He, they can, re- I mean, Baltimore can use some more receivers. You know what I mean? Uh, help Lamar out. I mm. mean, well, yeah, Baltimore can use more receivers, but then we can't get mad with Lamar. Lamar's like, you got to fit in. Yeah, you, you like did. we're, we're you five and one without you. Work. Like we're five and one without you. So you still you you got to find your groove and fit in on a team. Like I don't think he's going to be able to crack a thousand yards a season the way he wants to. Wow. Well said. All right, let's moving on, guys. Uh, the Dodgers versus the Atlanta Braves. The Dodgers came in not playing. I don't know where they've been, where these bats have been, but they was knocking the hell out of the ball. Chris Taylor, three home runs to beat the Braves last night. He hit two of them. Seemed like he he, he hit the ball and ran around the base and hit it again. <laughs> 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 Fig, did you did you see the game last night, man? And do you have any no, thoughts, man? man? I, I mean, I was sitting with some Atlanta dudes, and they was they was they. I shot it. What the hell, shot? How y'all gonna keep letting it hit out the park, shot it? Yo, he was actually on fire. But you know what? The Dodgers needed that. Their back was against the wall. They was on the verge of being absolutely eliminated, and they had to get that win. Now it's just two, three. 
So they still need to get two more in order to advance. But they did the damn thing, man. His back was against the wall, and he showed up big. That's a that's the sign of a star. When the when when the stakes are highest and you deliver, that's a star. Hey, speaking of backs against the wall, Sharonda, our number one uh, audience member, it's her birthday. Sharonda. Get the back off. Get your back off the wall. All right, get your talent. <laughs> uh, the Braves and the Dodgers, man, great game last night. Um, can the Braves come back, bounce back from this loss? No, I don't think so. I think this is this is a rat fizzle. You know what I mean? The Dodgers. We talked about this in the early part of the season that, you know, what, what was expected of them, could they live up to it? They're showing you right now they are who we thought they were. You know what I mean? I, you know, the Braves, home of the Braves. Wow. That's all I can say, man. That, it, that ain't been hot since Jermaine Dupree put that record up. Wow. Wait a minute, Tyler. You're saying that the Braves can't get it done this week. No. They can't, they can't win another game. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Oh, goodness gracious. Bully. Man, just say it ain't so. Say, say talent is wrong. Is Atlanta done? Talent is wrong. Atlanta is done. Now that I've uh, done what you've asked me to do, let's talk about the truth. There's a bunch of Atlanta Negroes at the gathering spot who is watching that game like, hey, dog. Uh, hey, uh, <laughs> what they doing? No, nothing. Because no, it, it, it's okay if you lose like a, ten to eleven, but eleven to two, you was checked out. I don't know if child support was in the dugout <laughs> looking wow. for, for uh, unpaid child support. I don't know what was happening. I don't know if somebody had tested positive for COVID. I don't know what was going on in the dugout, but it damn sure wasn't baseball. I mean, it really it looked like this. My man was like. <laughs> <laughs> he was playing full ninja with them balls, bro. The sound effects. <laughs> the sound effects are always incredible. <laughs> Yo, Mike, Sean, man, these guys are jumping the gun, right? I mean, it's still a lot of series to play. And and how about this? Is it a situation where they're kind of, I mean, we kind of discussed it yesterday, elongating the series uh, because you don't want a short series, maybe? Not elongating, but I, I ain't mad at your vocabulary with the elongating. I, I felt like you should have said pause for no reason, but I, <laughs> but that was me. That was my fault. That was my immaturity because you shouldn't have said that. You were very immature, sir. I was very immature with that statement. I want to say that right now. I have nothing on Netflix, so you can't take my anything off I have on Netflix. You can't cancel you. You can't cancel me. I'm not You're even uncancelable. built like that. Yeah, I'm uncancelable. I'm not even Yo, on the level yet. But honestly... Nice. Uh, for all my Hispanics and out there, the Dodgers are a wrap. Like everybody's saying, Atlanta's a wrap. The Dodgers don't. That that was their last stand last night. They don't have wow. enough pitching anymore. They got too many injuries. They got my man uh, Turner pulled a hamstring. They're gonna go to Atlanta, and Atlanta's gonna wrap it up and move on. And wow. that's, that, hey, that's what it is. Uh, the, the Dodgers just have an extreme amount of injuries right now. It's crazy how without uh my man. Oh damn, I almost forgot his name. Uh, one of the greatest pitchers ever. Oh God, I'm I'm Rodney right now. Damn it. Uh, uh, what is his name? I'm Take your yeah, time. I'm gonna let you get it. Go get it, Mike. It's in there. It's in there to the left. Is, I was about to call him Coleslaw. It's not Coleslaw. It's a uh, Kershaw. Yes, Kershaw. yes, yes. Jesus, what are these going Where'd it go, Fig? What the save? Thank you, Fig. Jeez, Lou. You know what? Just. Just go to the next person. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> uh, who made the coleslaw? Who made the coleslaw? Who, who I'm gonna call him coleslaw? Right? Clay, I'm gonna call him coleslaw. Right. Oh my god, these raisins! Oh my god! Yo, oh, it is going down today on the box seats. Uh, I googled before the show stories I'm sick of. Mm. Here we go. Ben Simmons is set to meet with the Sixers. Ben is saying now that he's not mentally ready to play. My question for you guys is mental health, the new flop bully. Oh, oh, you're going to start with me. Yeah. <laughs> it must be my birthday. Please don't say nothing about light skin, please. Please. I promise you. I've already run that joke. Hey, 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 bully ties everything <laughs> in the light skin. 
please. I, I promise you, this isn't even about him. And don't call him a slave. And don't call him a slave. And don't... I'm not big. Mike, Ooh. Hey. Ooh. That, was hey. that wasn't called for. It's hey. Friday. We brothers. What are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> you know, this, this man for Get to the point, know? bully. Goodness gracious. Here's the point. Ben Simmons needs to meet with the Sixers because nobody wants him to be the headache that he's being. He's a distraction in the locker room. He's a distraction in the media. We didn't need him to win a game. A at this point, Ben Simmons needs to meet with the Sixers in order to save face, kowtow, and step and fetch. That's it. Cow towel. He will cow towel. He will step and fetch. They used to call me crazy bully, but now you're just now talking call him crazy Joe. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Talent. Uh, is bully making a great point, man. I mean, Ben Simmons need to meet me with these guys to say some face and move on. Ben Simmons need to call Odell Beckham and go out for a drink. <laughs> Hey, child, let me ask you this before you move on. Hey, what are they drinking? What is Odell Beckham and Ben Simmons drinking? First of all, they're too softy, so they have brunch <laughs> drinking mimosas. <laughs> 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 Yo, on the real, man, these, these, if there's any two dudes I say that need to get off of a team and go rebuild and start fresh and, and you, you want to prove something, go somewhere else and show and prove because I don't think it's going to happen. Where you at? Wow. Uh, well said. Mr. Fig, thoughts, man. Ben Simmons, back in the news again. Stories we don't want to talk about again, but here we are. Uh, he says mental health, man. Now, now you champion everybody else on mental health, Fig. I need you to stand up for this man. No, no. The thing is about, uh, I, I, look, here's the thing. The way that Ben Simmons has been playing, the way that he's been acting, does that lean towards a possible mental health issue? I mean, is he, he got the yips. He, he's right there for a dunk. He's almost seven feet tall, but he passes it off. Does that, I mean, can we lean towards him? I mean, he's under Ooh. all of this pressure from the Sixers Ooh. organization, his teammates, possible fans. Did, could that possibly lean towards a mental health issue? The thing is, is that, People talk so negative about Ben Simmons. He can't do this. He can't do that. And they say, he said, well, when, why don't y'all just go ahead and trade me? He said, oh, no, no, no. We can't do that. You're way too good to trade. Wait a minute. Which one is it? Because I'd be confused. If you're telling me I can't shoot, I ain't going to do no layups, I got this, I got that, but you don't want to trade me? Somebody please wow. explain that to me because you, you're talking from both sides of your mouth and it's two sides to a coin. It doesn't make sense. It means somebody is lying. Mm. Hey, Mike Sean, Fig says maybe Ben Simmons does have some mental health. They, they jerking him around, pulling him left, pulling him right. Uh, or is this a flop that we've never seen before? I think I want to... I want to applaud you, Rodney. I don't know who thought of this angle, but it's a good angle. <laughs> this is a good angle. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is an excellent angle, and I think Fig did bring up some good points where Ben Simmons has been a little erratic. I will say the person with the mental problem, for those who don't know, the GM of the Sixers went on the radio in Philadelphia on the number one rated show, right? right. Uh -huh. And said he will not trade Ben Simmons unless he gets somebody who can help their team significantly and he's willing, to, he's willing to wait it out. This could go on for four years. That's a quote. Who got the mental health problem? Ben Simmons or the general manager who thinks he's going to keep Ben Simmons on that team for four years? Ooh, wow. Wow. Ah, but on the contrary, uh, Dr. Snoop, the cat in the hat, said he wouldn't eat green eggs and ham. But he actually did. Yeah. You were great. That 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 take that you said with Ben Simmons, but then when you brought the green eggs and ham, damn it, fig. That, no. <laughs> Ben Simmons doesn't have him. Well, listen, I'm not. I'm not trained, and I'm not a doctor. I think Ben Simmons and the team have decided that this is the way to keep their money. The way that they can keep their money and get paid is by claiming mental health. That's the way they can still get paid by not playing. If he just doesn't play and the league doesn't doesn't go for this mental thing, then he has to give up the money per game. That's why I believe they're bringing the mental health situation up. He also he also claimed a back issue. He, ben wow. Simmons also claimed that his oh. back was stiff. So he, then, uh, he is claiming back issues. And for those of y'all that know or those of you that don't know, I don't care what kind of doctor you go to, they cannot always diagnose when you have a back issue. But you hold up. You, you know what's very interesting what Mike said, and, and this, this question is that 
<clears throat> this is we've seen this happen before. We've seen this with every rich or politician or high profile man that got caught cheating on his wife. Oh, whoa, now, whoa, whoa, now, brother, hold, on. hold on, hear me out. What they do now, if whoa. you just say, yeah, I cheated, that's a problem when it comes down to divorce. But if you say you have a problem, if you say you uh, have a, a sexual addiction problem where you go speak to a therapist, mm -hmm. infidelity is no longer in play. It's yeah. still in play, trust me. No, but I, I, I hear what you're saying. You, can, you have a loophole. You have a way out if you have a problem. You was you definitely in the loophole. Say, go ahead. You have a sexual problem and you get help for that. That changes what that is, you know. Yeah, it's it been, changes what he's right about that. It does yeah. change what it, So this it, could be the new version of that. Yeah, the new version of uh, scapegoating and getting out of it, but the, the NBA general managers are already talking. This is a players league and we all are pro players. The general managers and the owners are in the Sixers' ears saying, don't you dare give in to Ben Simmons. And their next meeting, when they come, this is going to be a problem. Yeah. Because the, the basketball, the, all the owners are already saying, we've had enough of James Harden saying he don't want to play. Mm -hmm. And they get traded, traded to Brooklyn. Now we got Ben Simmons who ain't on the same level as James Harden saying, I just don't want to play. Trade me. So these contracts are being thrown out the window. The yeah, negotiating it, situation is coming where these players have abused their power. Yeah. And I'm all for it. I'm, no, I'm with you. But you have abused your power, and things are about to turn. The, you, know, Mike is the same right. thing. you know what? We, we talked about this, and, and people were like looking at me like I was crazy. Now, here's the thing. There are 30 teams in the NBA. That means there's 30 owners. Each team has 15 players. That's 450. The, the owners get half and the players get half. So 30 owners share whatever the money the NBA can bring in and then 450 guys got to share the rest. So my problem is the owners make 15 times more than the teams. I'm saying, yo, why don't these players start their own league? If it's a power struggle, do your own thing. Because you got to be a billionaire to buy one team, and even but though people got lost, team, you start your own. If I and you have to have you, start... and you have to have a billion to start your own. No, you, you got to have more than I'm that. About, I don't. I'm not talking about in the NBA. Start your own league. When you start your own business, you can start anywhere you want. When the you NBA know, first kinda, started, that's... they didn't start with all of this money. You know what, Fig? I I I think you you you've been making this point, and it's not it's not absurd. And you you and I talked offline, but let me let me rebut that with this. That's equivalent to going, you know, I'm going to Target. I'm gonna start making my own clothes. No, 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 you're not. Not that simple. Cause you're not an expert at making clothes. You know what I mean? And so, since you're not an expert at making clothes, I would love to see what you're saying happen, Fig. But we, we, we're not. We're not. Uh, wow. you, you're talking about these players. They, most of them didn't even finish school. Oh, I mean, they look. can barely add up their own their own salaries. Yo, look, look, you don't. Look, you don't look. need. You don't need 450 players to start their own team. How many you, you need, Fig? Need How many you need? Fifteen to thirty. 30. Nigga, you know, listen, let me tell you this. You know who are great business? You know who are great in business? You got Michael Jordan that's great in business. You got Shaq that's great in business. You got Magic that's great in business. He's not going you got either. LeBron James is great in he business. He's not going either. None of those guys are going. You got several great minds in the NBA. But like they, I don't they're not I'm going. Always, I don't always, listen, let me just they're say this because they're not I don't always listen. I don't always have to be the smartest man in the room. All I have to be is smart enough to hire a great mind to start this organization, and then we could do it that way. I don't have to have the mentality. If I have the money, I can hire somebody who has the, the mentality and help me put this whole thing together. They don't have the my, money. my favorite part is when Rodney started to go against him and he gets disgusted. Things like that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like, nah, you can't business bully. Hey, hey, Let me ask you this, Talon. I'm so sorry to cut you off, bro. Bully. <laughs> Does this theory of figs hold any weight? To a certain extent, yes. Right? Oh, shit. Um, okay. Oh, you full screen, nigga. Uh, keep in mind that you know in January we take we, we we take hold of the American Basketball Association. And you know, I mean, we got some we got some backers. The thing of it is, do I think we're gonna do what the NBA does today? No. You wanna know why? 
I'm not a delusional moron. I'm an actual businessman. Whoa. Um, Whoa. The, 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 the two, 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 two figs point, though. Ice Cube didn't take a billion dollars. You know what he did? He got players that were still healthy enough to do half court. He understood the importance of entertainment and say what you want. But Lisa Leslie don't want two championships in that bad boy by coaching men. She puts butts in seats. At the end of the day, the big three got themselves a contract and, and they started doing stuff on television and they went and they got sponsors that were interested not only in the spectacle of the big three, but Coming also in the star children. power of those uh, of those athletes and of Ice Cube himself. Right, so yeah, it's yeah. possible to make a nice little living. Master P has an arena football league, which I said Colin Kaepernick should have went to if it was really about him wanting to get back into playing football. And the same way, The Rock is going to do what he does in the XFL. I've been saying this for months, but now all of a sudden, Fig sings, Fig sings my song, and everybody hears it. Oh, Fig stole it. No, no, no. I no, think, no. He's, I, I don't think, think Fig is like a joke. I think you like and Fig are losing your damn minds, Mike Sean. Of course. It is a very good idea. The only problem is, even with the big three, every player in the big three, if they were given the opportunity to play in the NBA for league minimum, would leave immediately. If it was every person who plays in the XFL, if they were given a, a chance to play in the NFL for league minimum, they would leave immediately. Yes. I'll, I, 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 it's a great idea. We did it with BET, and we sold it to the white man after it blew up. Listen. Not we. Not we. Bob Johnson did that. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, hold on, but guys. We, Mike Sean's got the floor. Wait a second. But we would all take a series <laughs> deal on BET <laughs> right now. We would all we would all do our sitcom on BET right now if we were offered, and we'd all take it. I, I got one. Okay, Dave, I get oh, it. I know, on, I know you're on, a millionaire. On, bully, you're not know. up. I know, I know, Bully, you're a millionaire. I get it. That's Tell not it. what I was going to say. you I'm rubbing your brow. Yeah. But um, what I'm saying is, in the aspect of reality, mm -hmm. players have to be careful right now. And if we're trying to start a league, you need at least 30 billionaires to start a league no, to go against... Oh, my God. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Bully. Fig made a point. Bully made a point. Mike Stone has chimed in, and now the analogy man himself. Here well, goes. here's the you thing. I always tell people what you want for people may not be what they want for themselves. Ooh. It's easy for Fig to sit back and say, all you need is this, that, the third. How about they don't want to do that? How about uh, it's more people in the world that like to show up and get a check than to go do the hard part of the business, You're meaning right. building it from scratch. So how about that's really where we are right now? Mm. And you know what? You know what this, I equate this to, oh, I hate oh, to use oh, the slave big, analogy. Big, big, you have the floor. I hate to use the slave <laughs> analogy. Thank you, Rodney. Oh, oh, but guess slave what? Slave analogy. Oh, it's a slave God. analogy. Running away from the plantation was hard. Escaping from the plantation and going to the unknown was extremely difficult. And when that option was presented, a lot of the slaves chose to stay. Thank you, Fig. Being free Fig. is difficult. Guess who's going to stay, Fig? LeBron. Going to stay on the plantation. Everybody. Uh, all of the Golden State Warriors are going to stay on the plantation. <laughs> the Houston Rockets, they definitely stand on the plantation. Let me tell you, I, 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 if if we could orchestrate something like that, that would be huge. But you can't even get a billionaire to buy a team in the league. Mm -hmm. Because they right? won't sell it. They won't let him. I, I just want to say this. Magic Johnson go, go. been trying to buy the, a team and they wouldn't sell the, it to him? The NBA has a chance. If the players in the NBA right now, you, you want to talk about dreams and stuff like that? The NBA could literally be turned into Black Wall Street if the NBA players don't make a league. Don't make a league. Make a situation where financially y'all create something where y'all use that money that y'all make, that those hundreds of millions of dollars guaranteed that y'all make. Y'all could make that and turn that into something. Don't worry about building another league. We don't need another basketball league. What we need is a city to be run by us. That's what we need. Everybody, we don't need a basketball league. It's what, we, what you need and what people want or wish to do is two different things. It is two different things. To, You're exactly I go right. Back to what I say, bro. I, and I'm a businessman like the business bully. I love the businesses that I love, but it don't mean I want every business. When I go to McDonald's, I'm not thinking about, hey, I need to own 10 McDonald's. And nigga, give me that number three. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to own McDonald's, though? 
No, I want a number three large special sauce, and I got somewhere to be. <laughs> Dallin is absolutely right. And Dallin, I'm going to piggyback on that. When I go to a strip club, I love naked women. I don't want to run these chicks. I just want to go there and... <laughs> I don't, to the, I don't want to set the I don't want to set the schedule up for him. I don't want to do nothing. That's it. Hey, hey, hey Fig go to strip club. Go, you know I'm taking over. Fig go to strip club like this. What's a fig head? What's a fig head? You know we have to go to strip club. Like you know, I can give you this money. We can go take this down the street and start our own club. Hey, listen. The strip, strip club is strip just revolutionary. Listen, the strip club is just a building without the strippers. Who controls the strippers controls everything. Hang on, hang on, hang on, Players Club Three. Hang on, fit. You don't Who you DJ do Quick? It. Who you? Who you DJ Quick? <laughs> hey man, we have to move on. Uh, such a great dialogue, though, guys. Really, I mean, Fig makes incredible point. Bully made some great points. Mike Sean and and and, and I got a new segment for you, talent. Grown man logic with talent. Grown man logic. He <laughs> 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 said, well, "Well, you know, I, I, talent never fails for me." All right, let's let's move on. Um, speaking of uh, mental uh, health, Brandon Knight. Oh shit, Brandon Knight. Uh, this whole story. Let me, let me. Matter of fact, let me find a story before I uh, 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 expound on it. Da, 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 da. Brandon Knight. Brandon Knight announces he needs a break from football to address mental health issues. Was supposed to report to the Ravens after being released from the Cowboys. Ties into the Ben Simmons story. Check this out, man. Um, again, is is this mental health thing? I mean, uh, you know, uh, amidst what, what we're seeing. Uh, with with uh, the the young ladies in uh, tennis and and other sports, uh, some of the guys are starting to go. You know what? My, my head ain't right either. I mean, should we? I mean, it, I think it's easier for when it's women for us to go. Hey, man, she's having some issues. Let's let's give her some time. But you dudes don't get that same leeway. Am I right? I mean, somebody is telling Brandon's ass to get to work. Uh, what, what, what's your thoughts, Tyler? No, you're right. Uh, it is definitely a double standard when it comes to that. Um, and, and again, there we go with the, with the, the mental health. And, and by no means, even though we crack jokes on it, we do know it's a real thing. But some of us, uh, right now, it seems to be that skate. It seems to be that thing that if I need some time off, I need a little a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months. If I say that, what can you say to me? without getting bashed, you know, by society, by going against me. If I tell you I got a mental problem or I need some mental stability time off, what can you say to me? So this is going to be one of those things. You know what this reminds me of? This <laughs> is, in a car accident, this is back thing. What is it? The one thing in a car accident, and Michael Short, the light bulb went right off. Back thing. <laughs> if you ain't got nothing solid and you trying to get a lawsuit, you trying to get paid, my back. It's if they can't tell you, your back ain't hurting. Undetectable. You can't. You can't call me a liar. Oh my! Whiplash. That's Am true. I right? Mike? Hey, hey, Fig, no. Fig, uh, man, you you are our champion on the show when it comes to mental health, man. That's why I always come to you first on these things, man. This young man is, is going through it. He, he hasn't reported to his job. Cowboys let him go. He should be in the Ravens camp. He said, "Man, I need some time, man. I need some time." What you think? You know what? Here's the thing, Ronnie. It's quite possible. I mean, out of all the sports, it's quite possible. Two, two um, yeah. uh, players that we know for a fact that had mental health issues. One was Delonte West. Kevin Love said that he was having some issues. I think we're coming into a culture where it's more acceptable for people, like, because mental health was always pushed aside, especially in the Black community. It was taboo. It was something that we couldn't talk about, and especially for men. It was something that we couldn't talk about and say that we was having mental mental health issues. We had to always be strong and, and put on a, a, on a front because we were men. If you said that you was having a mental health issue, you was considered weak. Fast forward to the sport that the man is in. They play football where they having those collisions all the time. You having the CTE. How is it not possible that he's having a mental health issue? Maybe it's something as simple as that. Maybe he's having some kind of uh, CTE type issue. You don't know. And just like Talon said, with your back and your brain, it's two things that they can't, they, there's not an exact science on it where they can tell you that you're wrong. Nope. Wow. Wow. Well said. Well spoken. Uh, Bully, 
Uh, is this part of the pussification of the black male? Um, <laughs> I'm so glad you asked, Uncle Rodney. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Um, I'm out. I'm going to say this. In 2001, a young man from Harlem named Mason Betha uh, realized that his contract was, uh, let's just say, as useless as a warm bucket of hamster vomit to him from a financial standpoint. And so he went um, to his record label and said that he all of a sudden found the Lord and was able to get out of his contract uh, using remaining songs that made up the Double Up album. I'm talking about Mace. You know Mace. Mace, he, he went and became a pastor. Um, it's amazing what you can do to get out of certain contracts if you pull some type of exemption that no one can argue. It's definitely like going to Showtime at the Apollo and singing Jesus is Love by the Commodores and sounding like hot trash truck juice. It doesn't matter. They're not going to boo you. And that's what's happening here. Mm. The problem is when we're starting to talk about uh, you know, a, a player um, you know, uh, like um, Brandon Knight, the difference between a Brandon Knight and a Ben Simmons is Brandon Knight said, I need to spend time with my family. I love this sport. I thank the Ravens for allowing me an opportunity and I can't wait to get myself well and come back to play this sport I love hopefully next year. Ben Simmons said, my brain, my back, I'm not going on this track. Like, it's just what it is. Like, you got to pick, you got to pick a loophole, homie. That's it. So yeah, I mean, I, I Mike think Sean, it, is this way. loophole? Or are we seeing uh, the league and the uh, the world changing in reference to mental health, man? I think mental health is a serious issue. I struggle with depression. Mm -hmm. Ben Simmons is full of it, and Brandon Knight, I really think, needs to be paid attention to because a man who's not a star in the NFL, when you know how short their careers are, who says right. I need a break, is risking his whole career. There was a Cowboy player running back, and I forget what his name is. I actually, uh, excuse me, I did make fun of him when I was on the radio. He actually lost his job because even though he was making a few million, he walked out of a store and he stole underwear and, and cologne. And he literally walked out. And instead of anybody thinking, why the hell would you do that? I made fun of him. We all clowned him. He disappeared off into the sunset and got arrested again later on. There was something wrong. There was something wrong off the door, on a serious note. Right. These football players, like Fig has brought up, this is a car crash per minute. And when somebody says, somebody says, listen, I know I only got two career, I only got two or three years at best in this league, and I'm willing to take off, there's something serious. Ben Simmons, on the other hand, I gotta tell you, I just think it's just a ploy, just to cop a check, and I think the business bully is right. And when you have somebody like Ben Simmons do that. It brings down the actual issue of mental health because now owners have to go, is this just a scam? And it's a shame that Ben Simmons would resort to that. And, and it's getting irritating with Ben Simmons where, listen, man, do what Kyrie did. You want to take a stand on something? Take my money. I don't want to play for y'all until until y'all trade me. Can right. I ask but don't, do this don't do this mental health thing now, Ben. Don't do this now. Can I ask Mike a question? Mike, yeah. you, you know Ben Simmons has been coddled since 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 he started playing basketball. High school, yes. college. They said he checked out Coddle, of college. That's a strong now, word. He, now 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 he's got into the NBA and somebody is calling him on that. So I think what he's doing is a tantrum. You know a little yeah. child doesn't get what they want, they fall out on the floor, they start kicking and screaming, they throw in a tantrum. Isn't that a form of a mental break? It could be a form of a mental break or it could be a form. It could No, no, I'm not. And when I say this, I'm not disagreeing with you. It could be a form of a mental break or it could be a form of just being a spoiled ass young man yeah. who's been coddled since high school. And my thing is this, this, this thing is like, I want the NBA players to be in power. I want them to control their situation. I don't want guys like Ben Simmons to ruin what you have. Or, or Go ahead, it could talent. just be it could just be being light skinned. Let's not forget that. You know what, uh, talent? You know what, man? <laughs> when we talk about when we I talk about it. being coddled and treated a certain way throughout your life, you know, now again he's reached a point where the pressure is, you know, has surmounted to a certain extent where he don't probably want to deal with that level of pressure. So a tantrum to to fix a uh, question, a tantrum is not a mental break. A tantrum is exactly what the, they call it. A tantrum. Yeah, a tantrum. Yep. 
Wow, yeah. Talent, Talent, you brought up the light skin issue. I'm, I noticed over your, your right shoulder there, there's a picture of a gentleman that, that's got a bit of a light skin look. Um, mm-hmm. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, no, hold on, hold on. Slide don't back cover, the other way. Don't cover up. Don't cover up. Slide the other way. The other way. Other way. This way? No, no. no way. Way. Well, you go either. Uh, this is right. like, like, there we go, there you go. That what? is the light and skin. Talent, <laughs> and Talon is wearing light blue. Why are you wearing light blue? Why are you not wearing dark blue? Listen, listen. He's not trying ain't to do dark blue. Said, hey, you guys, we are at, we're at 17 icon. minutes. We got a lot of work to do, so we got to get going. Um, let's go. Bully, who are you giving the business to this week, today? I... I'm giving the business to the NFL. Woo! The whole the national, league? The entire league. Get them good. The National Football League has made hundreds of billions of dollars off of players, not just black players, not just white players, not the occasional um, Indian or Yugoslavian players, not the tiny little Lilliputians that make up the kickoff teams throughout the league. All of these players have contributed their blood, sweat, tears, and talent to the league, and you know what they've got for it? CTE and bad bank accounts. Do you realize that four years after the average NFL player retires, they are usually worse or or, or put into um, poverty? Four years after they retire, while the NFL just keeps on rolling, right? We have people who don't want to address the mental health that happens in the NFL, but I submit to you one Aaron Hernandez. I submit to you one Orenthal James Simpson. What I'm saying is the NFL has a accountability issue when it comes to the health of our players, not only the mental health, but the physical health and the fiscal health. And I understand that there's an NFL Players Association, just like when I was a kid, I understood that WWF had a commissioner named Jack Tunney who didn't own or control anything when Vince McMahon was sitting right there in the booth calling the match between Hogan and Savage, and we had no idea that that man owned the whole thing. It's a hustle. That's why these players are continuously being fed into the machine and being told, oh, you can get mom out of the hood and you can go ahead and and, and get all the bad broads and he can be like Steaming Willie Beeman in a little movie called Any Given Sunday where you can just ride off to the sunset and and sip your stuff and, and drink your metrics. I am sick and tired of us acting like it is okay for these folks to be entertained, but not taken care of, not catered to. We do not take care of our heroes once they get off the field and they get carted off and they do everything to put their thumb in the air while somebody puts a finger up there, you know what. NFL, Woo! you get the business. Wow. Another another killer. The business bully came through and it is time now for the box seats. Top dogs. Ah, here we go. We're about to wrap it up. These are my five top dogs of the week. You need to tell me what yours is. Number one on my list, I got to give it to the sexy, the cute, the fine, the gorgeous, and the extremely talented. Candace Parker dropping 16.13 rebounds, four steals, one block to lift her hometown team. The Chicago Sky to their first WNBA championship. Chicago 80, Phoenix 74. Candace Parker is a DAWG dog. Yes, she is. Second on my list, I got to give it to Dakota Rain, Dak Prescott. He did the damn thing, passing for 445 yards, three touchdowns. He did throw one interception, but Dallas over the Patriots, 35 to 29. Dakota Rain is a dog. Third on my list, I got to give it to my man, Lamar. That boy be balling out. Lamar Jackson, a one-man wrecking crew, passing for 167 yards, one touchdown. He threw two interceptions, but still managed to blow out the charges. And Justin Herbert, which is an MVP candidate, 34 to 6. And they actually asked this man to try out for another position. Damn, Lamar Jackson is a dog. Wow. Fourth on my list, we talked about him earlier in the show. I got to give it to Chris Taylor. This man knocked out three home runs, four for five last night, six runs batted in. He's the first player to hit three home runs in a single game 
in the postseason. Dodgers 11, the Atlanta Braves 2. Chris Taylor is a dog. Last but not least, this man put on an absolute show last night. Got to give it to my man, Steph Curry. Lord have mercy. He scored 25 points in the first quarter, ladies and gentlemen, and wow. he never missed a shot in the first quarter. Um, he shot nine for nine, five for five from three. He went on to score 45 points, 10 rebounds, one assist. The Warriors over the Clippers, 115 to 113. Steph Curry is a dog. That's my top dogs. What's yours? Wow, well done, Fig, man. That's Steph Curry, dude. He's open when he get out his car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Skippy. Yes, he is. Wow, that's crazy. All right, let's keep it moving, man. Um, Gruden says the truth will come out. But here it goes. Will the truth make him less of a racist, bully, or homophobe? Bully. Uh yeah, the, the truth is, he is. You ever see somebody arrest somebody because they want to get oh, somebody mind you, big? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we go with these last few t topics, these are all quick takes, guys. Gotcha. All quick takes. Yeah, Keep no, yourself um, up. No, this, is a, this is a red herring. This is literally a Trojan horse. Group, he's he's the fall guy for something much bigger that they hope you don't see. It's misdirection. It's three wow. car money in the street. Well there said, you Mike Sean. Quick take. Uh, I second what Business Bully said. The bigger issue is that everybody's comfortable speaking like this. All we're doing by exposing John Gruden's emails is making racists that are in the NFL be careful. That's all. Wow, the racists are being careful. Fig, this is what you always talk about. This is it right here. Uh, is Gruden, is, is, is there some bigger truth coming? Uh, I'm not sure if it's coming, if it come now or it may come later. But like uh, uh, Business Bully said, this is uh, something that they're putting out in front of you and saying, look at this and don't look over there. It's the red, the black, the red, the black. You got to find the red, you find the black. All right, which one is it? Wow. I always lose that game. Talent. Uh, I got to tell you, they said, you know, you, they coming or they're not coming. Um, Pause. <laughs> Pause. First of all, <laughs> let me tell you something. This is the NFL. This is corporate America where snitches get riches. Ooh. <laughs> 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 Yo, you killed that. That's a fact. You killed that. Yo, uh, it looks like look like Miami is at the the the, uh, the head of all of these trade rumors. What the fuck? What the? We just we just. Uh, uh, guys, oh, hold on, hold on. I don't know what that is. We over here giving out free advertising. I, I, I bet that'll teach our asses to talk about the NFL ever again. Yo! I bet you will slow down on that. I bet. That's my I'm bad. Sorry, Mr. NFL. That was fair. I'm not getting rid of y'all. All right. Sorry. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Yeah. Uh, Miami is in the middle of the trade. Of course, Tua is at the center of it. And Deshaun Watson is at the center of these talks. But Miami is saying, we ain't talking to nobody. Um... Who's full of the BS? Mike Sean. Miami. It's already been leaked out that they've it been in conversations with Houston. They want to make this trade. Unfortunately, this is why somebody this is not my point. Somebody made this point, so I'm gonna jack them for it. This is why Bill Belichick loves being in this division with the Jets and Miami. Because they give up on quarterbacks immediately. Two right. has started like 12 games, and they've already decided that he's not the dude. Is and, and they're going to bring in Deshaun Watson, who we don't even know is going to be able to play. So you're going to send your, your number one pick away for somebody you're not sure could, is going to even be able to put on a uniform. So go ahead, Miami. This is why Bill Patrick just giggles. He says, all right, y'all y'all keep doing what you do. Yo, it's time for our next segment, Talents Flicks. Uh, this week, we're talking about football movies, talent. Football. Oh. You're yeah, muted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, you're muted, yeah, yeah, you muted, yeah. talent. Muted myself. Pause. Pause. Let me tell y'all something real quick. First mention I got to do is a basketball documentary called Bad Sport. 
Everybody check it out on Netflix. Crazy. Bad sport. Remember that. But we're talking Bad football sport. flicks. That's right. Football flicks right now. Nice I'm going to give you my top three, and I'm going to give you honorable mentions. First of all, the number one football flick of all time was Brian's song. Oh, you oh. know what? Oh. Oh. You cannot oh. watch Brian's song without weeping your eyes out. You oh. watch that without crying. You are not only heartless, you're an alien from another planet. Number I two, love Brian Piccolo. I'm going to tell you what, what jumped way up the charts. I don't know if you ever seen Friday Night Lights. Yes! Ooh. Yes, amazing! Friday Night Lights. That's all good acting in that joint. That's all good storyline, subject matter. And number three, I got to bump up because it's star-studded. Star-studded any given Sunday. You got to put that up. There. Yes, sir. Star-studded. <laughs> Chino coach and all that is crazy. Now let's talk about movies like Invincible, which is a true story, yes. which reminds me of another yes. true story that's about to be released in a couple of months about Kurt Warner. Did you see this movie? Yes, oh. yes, yep, yep. Yes, oh, the, indeed. It's called The yeah. Underrated or something like that, The Underdog. Because they got Kurt Warner movie. came like from like, uh, he was selling cars or something. He and he ended up taking a team. What was he doing? He was working in the supermarket. supermarket. Wow. Yeah. And he made a comeback. Uh, remember, he was on the Rams, on the Cardinals, and all that stuff. But his movie will be released in about three months. Reminds me of Invincible. Now, don't forget, a good movie was Express. Remember Express? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, 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 my man played um, uh, Jim Brown. Yeah, that was a very good movie. And last but not least, I got to shout out this movie here because I had no idea of the backstory until this movie came out. The Blind Side. Yes. About Michael oh, Hall. yeah. Michael Orr Go. And, and, and talent with that movie about Kurt Warner. A lot of people don't know. Kurt Warner had an opportunity in training yep. camp with the NFL team and he choked. Yep. He wouldn't go in. Yep. And he can't even explain it now why he didn't take they it was like, all right, well, go in there. And he was like, nah, I'm good. He did the Eminem in eight miles. Bro, he I, I, I was just in the movies and saw the preview. I was like, yo, I gotta see this movie. Yeah. No. Wow. Wow, man! A hey, hey, great, great job, Tyler. Man, it's it's so many. You know what I didn't realize was a, a, a football movie. Radio. Yes. Yeah. It's a football movie, dude. Yes. Yeah, it is. Yes. Show me the that. money. <laughs> Show me the money is a great one. Show oh, me the Jerry money. Maguire. Is a, Jerry Maguire is a football movie. Jerry yeah, Maguire is a football. Remember Draft the Day is a great football movie. Love draft. draft right. day is a great football movie. Any given Sunday would have literally got a nomination for an Oscar if they would have showed the footage of LL beating Jamie's ass. <laughs> they would have showed that footage. You're absolutely right. We got five minutes in the show. Five remember minutes. The Titans. <laughs> remember the Titans. Remember the Titans. Yes. yes. Remember that? Yo, that's great. It, it's some great football movies. And like, oh, oh, you know what my number one favorite football movie is? What is Rudy? Rudy. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I good. watch Rudy that's and cry good. every time when they when they, coach Rudy could take my time my spot. Well, that's that's <laughs> just because you was a big fan of the Cosby Show. I'm but Rudy. anyway, yeah, I'm, 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 but I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. But I Rudy. I want Rudy to take my spot, Coach. Rudy can take my spot. Yo, it's time for our next segment. Call this Mike's matchups. Mike Sean, he gives us the matchups for the week. We won't be picking the whole league, but we will pick the teams. Mike says, let's go. Mike All right, we Sean. got five. Real quick, we got the Kansas City Chiefs against the, the MVP, Derrick Henry and the Titans. Uh, we'll start with Talon. Who you got, Chiefs or the Titans? I'm going go to go with the Chiefs. Pull it out. Uh, business Bully, who you got? I got the Titans. Big, who you got? Difficult, but I'm going with KC. KC and uh, Roddy, who you got? I think that I think KC is in a tailspin and the Titans will get it done. And Woo! I agree with Roddy 100%. I th think Derrick Henry will run all over the Chiefs for at least 150 yards. Next game up, this could be the last game in Miami for Tua. As a starting quarterback, it's Atlanta. The Atlanta Falcons going up against the Miami Dolphins. Fig, who you got? I'm going with Atlanta because there's too much dysfunction in Miami. Talent, what are we going, who are we going with? Dirty Birds, Atlanta. Dirty Birds, business bully, who we got? ATL. Rodney Perry, who we got? Atlanta is not beating nobody. <laughs> I would say, say Miami, man. They're going to run you out of there, Rodney. I don't give a damn. 
Uh, Jimmy G is not playing this week for the San Francisco 49ers, from what I heard. So they're going against the Colts. Carson Wentz is doing his thing. Philly's upset. Business bully, just because of that, we'll start with you. Who you got, the Colts or the 49ers? I, I got the Colts. You got the Colts. Taylor, who we got, Colts or 49ers? I'm going with the Colts. Billy D, baby, Colts 45. Colts 45. Fig, who you got? So you know what, man? I I, I like I like uh, the 49ers, man. I, I think they got a well-rounded team. All right, uh, Roddy Barry, who you got? I'm gonna take I'm gonna take San Francisco, man. I like the young quarterback. I think he's gonna get it done this week. I'm gonna let you know. Speaking of young quarterbacks, we're gonna start with Rodney on here. The Shy The Chicago Bears are going up against the greatest that ever did it, Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Rodney, I want to see how much you read really riding for your team. I'm gonna be in Chicago this week. <laughs> And although I think Tom Brady is going to run all the way up and through the Bears, I'm picking the Bears. You're picking the Bears. Business Billy, who you got? Bears or the Bucks? I got the Bucks, bro. Talent, who you got? Oh, Talent got, you got, you got weapons. What you got? What that mean? What that mean? Buck knife. Buck, there you go. Buckingham. Oh, Buckingham is a buck knife. You would have thought the Puerto Rican would have got it, but I got the Tampa Bay Buckingham. Fig, who you got? Who you got? Fig, who you got? got Tampa Bay, baby. Last but not least, we got the New Orleans Saints, and I want to say I apologize to Jameis Winston, who I said would be out of there by this part, by this uh, part of the season, but he's still there, going against the Seattle Seahawks. Big, uh, does Seattle have a victory in them without Russell Wilson? Man, I don't think so. I'm going with the Saints. Uh, I'm going with Jameis Winston and the LASIK surgery. Let's go, Jameis! And Fig did mention that before the season by LASIK, so he has been up on that talent. Who you got? New Orleans Saints or the Seattle Seahawks? I second that emotion. Yo, who, what, what video are we playing during my segment? What is this? <laughs> we have a technical difficulty. What, what is going on, Rodney? What is this sabotage? Why? This is, oh, my God. Is this dude getting a haircut? Yeah, he Is that a butt cut? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that video with the girl... Giving him a haircut with her butt, the clippers in the butt. <laughs> oh, that's the butt cut. Yes, it is. That is the that's butt cut. That's the butt cut. Oh, oh yeah. man. The butt cut. Uh, uh, who we got? Tell who you got this. Oh, you got this. You already said you second the emotion. This yeah, is Billy. Who you got? The Saints or the Seahawks? Oh, I got the Saints, man. Roddy Perry, who you got? I think Rodney is frozen. Oh, he Rodney froze. God. What happened? What I got them mean? clippers that messed the show up. Well, guys, you've done a great job on behalf of our host, both our host Frank and Rodney Perry, the host of Falling by the Minute, so I'm not taking this job. But business fully, <laughs> tell everybody where they can get in touch with you and what you got on. Got going all on, business. All right, so uh, what really you got on? What you got on? <laughs> this is Polo. <laughs> This, this, this is Polo. Um, you can find me at Business Bully on all social media platforms. And this weekend, I will be playing in New York at Club Fig. That's the brand new strip club. It's a flip. Fig just got it. It's a double wide with a disco ball. I'm looking forward to it. Stripper got one eye and one leg, but we're going to keep it hopping. Looking forward to it. Ryan, are you back or are you frozen? I'm back, but, I, but I'm doing something. Go to somebody. Okay. All right, well, Talent, uh, let them know how they can get in touch with you. And tell me what you got on, Talent, what you got on. Hey, listen, man, I got on the lace uh, uh, lace uh, panty Speedos. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, don't worry about all that. He wouldn't know what I had on. You know what I'm <laughs> but, but to show you that I practice safe everything, I have on leg warmers with him. So listen, <laughs> this Sunday, Stress Factory, me and Michael Collier put it down out there Sunday. New Brunswick, New Jersey. And then Wednesday, you can catch me in my Harrisburg room, XL Live, bringing Michael Colley over there at the Harrisburg PA as well. Talent the Comedian on Instagram. Big, let them know how they can get in touch with you. And what do you have on? Uh, I'm wearing uh, double wide boxers to go with my double wide uh, trailer park. And I've got three poles in my trailer park strip club. So you come on down there and, and get yourself a lap dance. Even if it's kind of funky. No, boxies oh. Monday through Friday, baby, one and two p.m. Best damn sports show on TV. Have a great weekend, everybody. Yo, it's your boy Roddy Perry, RoddyPerry.com, Roddy Perry Live on all social media. I was trying to play this video. I got it from Amir Seeley. Hopefully, it don't freeze the whole system. Goodness gracious.
even on total strikes at the moment. Oh, oh, oh God! God! Oh, One of the most wow. spectacular Holy knockouts we have Are ever you seen. Me? That is real life ninja stuff. Wow! Yo, the worst thing can happen is to get kicked to the head. One more time, guys. They're so even on total strikes. Oh, oh. 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 One of the most wow. spectacular Holy knockouts what? we have Are ever seen. Me? That is real life ninja stuff. Wow. Phenomenal. Wow. Why I had to say ninja like that? Uh oh, stop the presses, everybody. Freeze. Nobody move. Nobody gets hurt. Hey. Oh, look at this. What is the here? man, the myth, the legend. His I'm back is hurt, but he's here. No, I'm trying to. Uh, uh, hang, bye, hi, bye. <laughs> oh, you were trying to get in? <laughs> that, that's it. That's the show, everybody. Yo. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the show. Uh, the name of the show is Box Seats. I'm Rodney Perry. That's Frank Holder. That's Talent. That's Mike Sean. That's Comedian Fig and the Business Bully. You guys have been great today. Thank you for all your your listenership and viewership. Uh, you can catch the show, Frank, uh, every day at the Human Meal TV. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> Have a safe video. weekend, y'all. Have a safe weekend. Oh, All right, here we go. I love the Let's get out of here. Y'all have a great day.